नमस्ते वेलकम टू द ग्रूप वन गाइडेंस सर्विसेस गाइडेंस क्लासेस टेलीकास्टेड बाय द टी सैट द टी सैट प्रिस्टेजियसली कंडक्टिंग द वेरियस ट्रेनिंग क्लासेस इन ऑल कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जामिनेशन दिस टाइम फॉर द ग्रूप वन सर्विसेस एग्जामिनेशन दे आर कंडक्टिंग दीज क्लासेस विद एक्सपर्टाइज पीपल इन दिस फील्ड सो वन ऑफ द एक्सपर्टाइज पीपल professor lakshmi devi madam attended for this uh, classes so welcome madam uh, so i am expecting a, a good conversation and good explanation from your side for our aspirants to write uh, the examination in effective mode sure so here uh, we have uh, social inclusion is one of the concept among the 13 concepts in the preliminary examination and as you know it Uh, this is a, a vast scope and you have to understand and there is a lot of uh, possibility for asking a uh, uh, logical questions in it to understand if you understand the concept uh, perfectly then only you can answer at the same time a chronological order also very very important because the government uh, introduced so many programs for the inclusions as inclusive policies so many committees are uh, already established for doing all these things so we will we are going to discuss and we want to share this information to all our aspirants so today's session is rural urban divide and understanding gender so on this uh, what is rural urban divide and uh, uh, later we are going to discuss about our uh, uh, gender, gender understanding our uh, gender so the first one is rural urban divide so how the rural uh, is divided in what base and urban is uh, divided these two are divided in what base what aspects so this rural urban divide can you share those things in fact uh, usually census commissioners on the basis of various pattern parameters okay define what is a rural area and which is an urban area okay but before going into these parameters i would like to say a country's development is measured by how much urbanization is there in that particular country so the more the urbanization more industrialization the less the urbanization less industrialization this is the uh, theory which we follow while talking about development of a country in our country 68.84% of our population as per 2011 census are living in rural areas that means most of the people are unskilled landless agricultural laborers hence their contribution to our gross domestic product is comparatively less okay and urban population is a very less less than 30% that means industrialization is still less in our country that is the reason india is still on the path of development it has not yet reached the development so from the view point of whether the country's development is there or not this particular rural urban divide will become a crucial one yeah here but here generally common question is hmm. how an area classified yeah I, i'll come to that only i'll come as, to that as urban and rural, rural. india yes. so this is a basic question generally they they will ask the question it correct? is it is it yeah. is okay usually we take three aspects into consideration a okay. student or aspirant is expected to remember this first and foremost one is what about the economic pursuits or occupations okay if more than 75% of the population are engaged in agriculture and agriculture based occupations then that area will be considered as a rural area okay second one is what about the population how many people are there 5000 and less than 5000 people are living in a particular area then that area is considered as a rural area if more than 5000 people then that area will be considered as an urban area but here one more classification also it is better to mention here that is metropolitan cities or mega cities like that we are having yeah. a variety recently smart cities smart also smart cities introduced. also have come global city concept global city, also yeah, we yeah. have adopted when the population of a particular area is more than 1 lakh then we call them as metropolitan city more than 1 lakh or more 1 like, crore yes well, no no metropolitan what? city 
these metropolitan cities are subdivided into six categories. Okay. If more than one crore population is there, then that will be considered as a class one metropolitan city okay. or mega city. Okay. So in between, we are having different categories. Mm -hmm. Third, I mean, along with this one more criterion, it is better to remember that is what type of governance we are having. Do we have panchayatra system or nagar palika system, hmm. municipal corporation or greater municipal corporation. For instance, Hyderabad city is having greater Hyderabad municipal corporation. Yes, yes. So, municipal corporation and panchayatra, even this also is one of the criteria. Another one is density of population. All these criteria will be used by the census. Okay. And density of population, if it is more than 1000 per square kilometer, then that area will be considered as an urban area. If it is less than that, it is considered as a rural area. But here, these definitions will be varying from one sister to another census. Okay. Generally speaking, these are the general criteria. The reason is, if a city is a class 1 mega city, the density of population per square kilometer may go up to lakhs of people. Okay. So, even that also one has to take into consideration. Okay. So, here uh, some information from the statistics which are uh, given by our census is the percentage of population living in rural areas in India as per the census 20, 200, 2011 means uh, 2011, 2011 stands nearly at 68.4. 68.84 percent rural population, about 83.3 crore people. At the time, it is 83.3 crore people crore. as per uh, 2011 census. So, they are, yeah, they are living in rural areas out of 121 crores of Indian people, right. while 37.7 uh, crore people stay in urban areas, means it is uh, approximately it is 31.16. 31.16 percentage lives in the urban areas and 68.84 percent lives in rural areas. These two statistics are very, very important. important. Even the population also very important uh, means uh, nearly 83.3 out of 121 crores people lives in rural area. 37.7 crore people lives in urban area. This is a very important statistic. So, all the people are, so the criterion to classify the area uh, as a rural area or urban area. So, the already you said various criterions to identify classification right. and the same time and statistics as per the census also. So, what is the percentage of population is there in the rural area and urban area? Also, is important. also very important. Along with that, one more aspect I would like to add. Okay. It is not only that how many class one cities are there, or how many metropolitan cities are there, how many class two cities are there. Okay. The, even these statistics also are important. The yeah. reason is we have regional disparities on the basis of rural urban divide. Okay. That is the reason this is a part and parcel of social exclusion and inclusion. Okay. So, in order to reduce social exclusion on the basis of where people are residing, we usually take up so many schemes in order to develop class 2, class 3, class 4 cities by introducing industries there or by taking up a variety of activities so that we can develop the infrastructure and other employment opportunities. So, in this context, the number of category of cities also is important. Okay. So, even that also we, one has to remember and okay. aspirant is expected to remember. So, uh, once you divide it as urban and rural, the total area of hmm. the Indian context is divided into urban and rural area. So, some of the uh, problems in urban area is poor air because pollution, okay. water quality, uh, insufficient water availability, waste disposal problems and high energy consumption because when that population density increases, so, obviously, there is a uh, high energy consumption, consumption also. Will be there, yes. So, our, these are the various problems for uh, urban area. So, right. can you share what are the uh, rural area problems? Unemployment is there, poverty okay. is there, 
seasonal unemployment this is a peculiar type of unemployment okay. disguised unemployment okay similarly illiteracy ignorance and caste based problems like casteism uh, on the basis of caste hierarchy and all okay. that besides rural to urban migration or migration of unskilled landless laborers coming to the urban area in order to eke out livelihood where they will not be able to get any livelihood yeah. so these are rural problems so in this context usually an aspirant is expected to know not only the list of problems but also particularly with reference to inclusion what are the various schemes or public policies taken up by the state yes, yes. for instance livelihoods or food shortages is a problem both in urban as well as rural yeah. areas yes, yes. so we are having food security policies food policy is there so as for as per food policy as per 2011 census 600 million people are there and government has taken the burden to provide at least two single square meals for all these 600 millions on the basis of whatever indigenous food they are having as per their culture yes so it is a kind of policy objective which we have taken up accordingly if we link for instance rural employment guarantee program okay. or food security laws various other aspects related to livelihood so the link an aspirant should be able to understand yeah so uh, so the problems actually faced in uh, urban area and rural areas rural. well so at the same time what are the different programs to overcome these uh, these problems which are faced by the rural and urban areas that's very important and also so, measures say for instance energy okay use of energy particularly lot of use of energy is a problem in urban areas yes high Here, energy consumption high energy consumption sometimes it happens it may drip the entire city may become Dark, without correct. any uh, correct, power correct. so in such a scenario what type of activities we have taken up once upon a time energy was under mixed economy okay. energy was under the uh, purview of the central government or okay. government yes, yes. but now it is not like that privatization of energy sector is done alternative energy resources also we are searching whether it is wind energy or nuclear energy so sometimes an examiner would like to test whether an aspirant is aware of not only problem but what are the various measures are taken yes, yes. so a student is expected to know all this yeah public uh, enterprises private enterprises even ppp Also, also triple also P, public, public, private, public private partnership. Partnership. This is also possible for uh, establishing various uh, uh, what do you call it as electro hydro projects hydro for providing. Yes. Yes. yes that's a very important thing here. Okay. So what is uh, we when we are going to discuss about uh, different uh, kinds of uh, uh, cities, smart cities like uh, metropolitan city, cosmopolitan city. Yes. We are using you know these are the various words. Yes. Then what is global city? in fact the word global city is linked with financial opportunities okay so, of course it is also termed as smart city and all that for instance hyderabad we are planning to create it as a global city okay when we create a global city what happens we will be including all persons so okay. that they can participate in all financial aspects so not only in our country but all over the world Okay. if we see the definition of global city we can understand this yeah so uh, i will share uh, one uh, definition about the global city a global city is also known as power city world city alpha city world center is a city that is a primarily node in the global economic network the concept comes from the geography okay. and urban studies and from the idea that globalization is created and for the in strategic geographical locals according to the hyder key of their importance of the operations of the global system of uh, finarade so yeah so this is our definition of the global city just now you shared the global yes. city so sometimes students uh, are aspirants you have to know the definitions also very very important 
they may ask they won't ask directly what is global city because it's it's not a uh, descriptive it's not a descriptive thing correct it's not a descriptive thing based on the definition the they question prepare. they the prepare question the question prepare. so yes. if you understand the definition of the the particular term or terminology then you can answer any kind of question sometimes maybe given assertion and reasoning also based also. on giving a two statements and they may ask yeah, may, they may give uh, they may give match the following they may right. give like there is a lot of possibility because uh, it's an objective type question it is when it is objective type question all these are possible for the right. examiner exactly. correct yes. okay so now what are the various housing policies in india in fact the right to housing is part and parcel of our right to, right to life yeah. our right to shelter yeah. in order to provide housing for particularly excluded groups because mm. many people are downtrodden or poor people they are not able to have any housing so the government has taken up various housing measures or schemes and certain policies also are prepared by the state in order to provide housing let me take a simplest example telangana government has taken one measure that is two bedroom houses for poor people okay. or people whose income is less than a particular criterion yeah, bpl two bedroom flats usually two yes. bedroom flats so it is a part and parcel of our housing policy okay so housing policies objective is to provide shelter for all people who ever are not able to and uh, how to define this shelter let me take once again two bedroom uh, policy of telangana state 560 square feet should be the plinth area of a particular area okay which is considered as necessary for any family to live there are many people who are living not even this much plinth area is not there if you go to some of the cities sometimes people are pavement dwellers also are there so in order to avoid all these problems the reason is marginality will increase if housing is not there so we have taken a variety of for instance pradhan mantri awas yojana yeah, yeah. program pradhan mantri awas yojana awas yojana is there similarly we had another program also indira gandhi awas yojana program also was there rajiv gandhi awas yojana program also was there so like that so many yojanas or schemes we are having so these are in a yeah before going to discuss about uh, various uh, schemes uh, uh, introduced in, uh, uh, yes. implemented by the government uh, state government and uh, uh, central, central government, government. Yes. i want to share some information so this is a very important for our uh, aspirants the first housing policy in india uh, is uh, formulated in 1988 this is a very important very important question to all the aspirants what when the first Uh, housing, uh, policy. housing policy when the first housing policy uh, is uh, formulated that's a very important that is in 1988 yes and there is some changes so some changes are incorporated in this uh, scheme uh, and in in 1990 so this was renamed the yes. renamed and a new housing policy was introduced the new national housing policies announced in august 1994 so this is also very important not so, only that the political scenario which led to this change also sometimes an examiner would like yeah, yeah. to test it okay okay so even that also it is better if the aspirant remembers which yeah. government was there who was uh, heading the government and all yeah. that so you just now you said the minimum plinth area for uh, house house houses you said 500 square fits yes so that's also very important also important very also important. important so minimum uh, plinth area for a built a uh, house built in area uh, built in area house. that is uh, 500 square feet that's very important and the same time for uh, their new national housing and habit uh, habitat or policies announced in july 1998 with some landmark initiative like uh, involvement of multi stakeholders uh repeal of urban land ceiling this is uh, urban land ceiling act also implemented for uh, permitting foreign direct investment yes in the real estate in real estate yes and previously we never allowed foreign direct investment in this particular sector real yes, estate yes. sector but now we are allowing foreign 
companies or individuals to purchase lands or enter into real estate sector okay this creates so many livelihood opportunities employment opportunities not only that there is a possibility of vertical structures okay previously we were not giving more than a particular particularly when we are talking about urban ceiling area how many floors there can be okay usually we used to have only four or five floors now okay. after allowing foreign direct investment we are allowing to construct more and more floors or vertical buildings we are allowing so here what is advantage of allowing vertical building structures okay even this also may be asked okay. an aspirant is expected to know similarly certain areas when we talk about urban selling certain areas will be year marked for greenery or for certain other reasons for instance in hyderabad city we are having one government order triple one go 111 yeah, of yes. course it comes under current affairs but it is a linked with housing policy yes yes absolutely the area which comes under this triple one go there we will not allow any vertical buildings so an aspirant is expected to know even these aspects so similarly when we go for global city or smart city etc we usually go for international airports yes. so when we go for international airports can we have vertical uh, housing there or not because in order to provide housing we usually construct vertical houses but what type of problems we are going to face noise pollution so though it may sound it is not directly linked but all these are a kind of connected ones yes, yes. an aspirant is expected to know these aspects also yeah so uh, if you want to discuss about the food security in india so according to the uh, india there are uh, nearly 195 million under nourished people under in india people correct are, yes it is correct so sir. which is a quarter of the world's hunger Population. burden so this is a very important information means uh, nearly 195 million people under nourished uh, people. people so this is uh, this is a very important thing and uh, roughly 43% of uh, children in india are uh, under nourished yes this is a very important and uh, people below poverty line in india are decreased to around 22% in 2011 and 12 this is the statistics so this statistics is a very important in 2011 uh, 12 a year so the the people who are uh, under the poverty line is decreased to up to 22% percent. 22% percent, so yes. this is a very very important as per the 2020 uh, countries uh, in india are ranked 71st among 113 countries in the gfsi what is gfsi global, global food security yeah, index so, so it is human a, development is a concept which we are using it under human development concept we are having uh, an array of concepts for instance uh, we are having gender gap index similarly global hunger index is there global food security index is there global poverty index is there so these indices talk about the country each country country and its a position on the basis of certain parameters say for instance when we talk about food because we are talking about yeah, food yes, security yes, yes. affordability quality quantity of the food and accessibility uh, of food and absorption of food these are the certain parameters which are taken into consideration by global hunger index or global poverty index or global food security index so on that basis each country will be ranked these statistics are very important for any aspirant not only that the definition of these index also yeah as per also. 2018 hunger global hunger index hmm. uh, our india uh, ranked 103 103 right but right. when you consider the global hunger index for 2020 there is a, a improvement improvement so improvement to instead of 103 it is improved to 94th yes. position yes. so this numbers is very very what is the position of our india as per the global hunger index in and 2018 so in 2018 is 103 as per uh, uh, global hunger index 2020 uh, 
our India rank is 94. No, no, there right. is some improvement. Improvement is there. But yeah. at the same time, comparison also a student is expected to know. Okay. Say for instance, when we compare our country with other developing countries okay. like Sri Lanka or Bangladesh or Pakistan or Nepal. So, where do we stand? Yes. That shows whether we are able to fulfill our duties in order to achieve sustainability index. We are having certain goals. Okay. Millennium development goals are there. Similarly, sustainable development goals are there. So, whether we are on the path of achieving these goals or not, we can understand. So, an aspirant is expected to know whether he is aware of all these things or not. Yeah. So, here generally we are using the word gender, correct? Right. What is gender? Now, gender is something about a categorization of people into male and female persons. Oh, yeah. The, that's a basic… Uh, that's the basic thing, basic yeah, thing. Yeah. But why gender becomes important when we talk about social Exclusion is a question here. Mm -hmm. On two grounds, this concept will become very important. Some people who will not fit into these two categories, male or female, that is a separate group. We are calling them as third gender. Yeah, yes. They are excluded. So, in that context, this concept is important. So, here and the biological characteristics are not uh, as also, okay. and here on the basis of biological characteristics, some people are excluded. They are not given any opportunities. Accessibility to certain aspects is not available for them. So, even in that context also, gender becomes very crucial. For instance, let us take a, uh, some uh, statistical data. Literacy. How many men are literate in our country? How many women are literate in our country? A question may be given in uh, let us say some examination. Yes, yes. So, this literacy rate shows whether we are having inequalities or not. So, in order to understand inequalities which create exclusion, the concept of gender and understanding it is very important. Okay. So, here general analysis when you go on as general analysis takes into account social and economical differences between women and men, correct? Right. So, in each stage of policy development for the purpose of revealing potential different impact of policy program and law on women and men, ensuring equal results for women and men, boys and girls in measure design and implementation. Right. Correct? So, that is about the general level. Then what is uh, sexuality? Here, we will be talking about, when we talk about gender, we will be talking about biological characteristics. Yes, yes. But along with that, we do have socio-cultural aspects also, psychological aspects also. Okay. When we take all these and subsume them, then we have the concept of sexuality. Yes. So, when we see the definition of sexuality, we can understand this concept. Okay. So, here we are using gay, lesbian, uh, uh, heterosexual. LGBT. Uh, yeah, sexuality. that's sexual. So, these are, uh, how these are going to be classified? On the basis of what type of characteristics biologically they are having or biologically they are not having. Okay. How they are feeling. I have already mentioned sexual. Yes, yes. Uh, sexuality is a concept which takes into consideration the psychological, socio-economic aspects also. Though a particular person is having so many masculine characteristics or feminine characteristics, but if they are feeling that they are not masculine or feminine, then their sexuality falls under a spectrum. It is known as gender spectrum. Okay. And we are having certain words like gender queer or queen or uh, already we have mentioned that is uh, LGBT community or third gender all that. Okay. These people usually are excluded. Okay. Yeah. We have already mentioned this. Some of the rights also were not given and the uh, Health wise also, we have to provide certain policies for them, yeah, sex yeah. reassignment therapy and all that. And uh, they are experiencing a kind of discrimination from the police and the other persons. So, even this also should be reduced or particularly it has to be eradicated. So, policies have to be made in this context. Okay. Anyway, uh, in this session, we discussed about uh, uh, this uh, rural and urban divide, how that it divide in what base, what the criteria and what are the different uh, programs uh, is you uh, included in this one and also gender we discussed. Maybe all these points are uh, very useful for the 
or aspirants to write the examination in effective mode as I hope you understand well, uh, prepare well. So, thank you madam, thank you for giving thank a you. valuable discussion and information to our aspirants. Thank you.